Okay, thank you for coming. A little bit uh, freezing. The difference between Klukon in August and Klukon in November is that the same temperature it's inside and outside because in August it's warm outside. <laughs> so I can't warm in any of these areas. Thank you for coming to my uh, presentation and I sort of uh, giving a few words about um, how you can use Kamaelio to hide some of your um, sensitive components eventually from your um, maybe core network or your interconnect services. First, uh, just a few words about uh, myself. So I'm originally from Romania, living in Berlin, Germany been with this project from very beginning. I'm actually a programmer by myself. I'm not coming from the telecom world. And I, yes, I've been in the open source world for quite some time, involved also in some events like FOSDEM or Kamaelio World Conference. I really love coming to KluCon and other events in the US, so probably some of you already met me in um, many other places. For those that are uh, new to Kamailio, just to make a bit of uh, clarification in terms of timelines and the names of the project. So practically, it started at a research institute in Germany as SIP Express Router project. After some transformation with how the, the uh, institute managed and actually sold the um, IPR of the um, SCR project, then we created a branch, OpenSCR, that we ended up in a trademark issue and practically since 2008 we use uh, Kamailio as the name for the project. It's uh, quite a popular uh, project in the um, carrier grade uh, telephony, so works pretty well with Asterix free switch for scalability, security, offloading some function like authentication, registration. Um, we run also our own uh, event in Berlin, Germany. So if you are interested in uh, learning more about, uh, I'm gonna be around today and tomorrow all the day. As a summary of what you should expect from Kamailio, so first it's a signaling only application, so we don't uh, manage ourselves the media stream. Of course, we can process it, but together with other application like uh, you could see from yesterday, or actually this morning, the first talk from Richard, we work together with um, RTP engine, and by that we can actually do media processing by like transcoding on encryption, decryption, but Kamailu itself doesn't have the component inside its code. It's used for um, many other uh, purposes, uh, including extensions to mobile networks, IMS, voice over LTE, but uh, as well as uh, scalability vertical or horizontal for various services. I'll have some examples of uh, config files. It's gonna be technique presentation after uh, introduction. Uh, you'll see some scripting language uh, there. If you are not familiar with, uh, be aware that we support other well-known scripting languages for you know, configuring Kamailio, like Lua, Ruby, JavaScript. With JavaScript, be aware it's not like Node.js, it's just the ECMAScript interpreter that we support, but it allows you, if you are familiar with that scripting language, to eventually start faster with um, Kamailio. We are also pure open source, like not a big company behind and not a single company controlling the, the project. So um, I'm from Asipto, practically together with another um, uh, engineer working on um, Kamailo, but then we get contribution from very large telecom like one and one Germany, which would be like second uh, telecom in uh, Germany. They contributed modules, they contribute uh, let's say resources for development, they even host sometime our events and there are a couple of other companies uh, that do the same. So it's pure distributed, no central control. We are a community in all aspects, from users to developers to management of the project. And uh, from uh, the 
perspective of the last years, if you want to see how uh, we evolved or what we got uh, on uh, uh, the, our newer version, we uh, release like every eight, ten, maybe sometimes even one year, a new major release, which means we bring out uh, new extensions and consistent uh, set of new features. I just put here the links to our uh, latest uh, major release notes and just show out some uh, keywords like uh, Java, uh, web, uh, JSON Web Token or Steer Shaken. It's quite a lot here about it. So we have actually two extensions uh, related to Steer Shaken. One is using Libs Steer Shaken from SignalWire free switch and one is using uh, Sexy ID project, something that I develop. I'll have a link at some point just in case you want to look more. But we support, yeah, also WebSocket, uh, TLS, a lot of things that um, are useful these days. So, practically, if you haven't used it, wait no longer. It's free. We even offer it today as half the price, or this week. Everyone is ramping up the prices, we lower it. So, Take your chance, play with it, and if you have questions, reach me or Fred or Giacomo. There are many people that have uh, experience with Camaelio in uh, this uh, room. Before going to the topology, Heining, just to show you a bit about our config file so you understand about it. It's like a scripting language. It's kind of three parts with global parameters where you specify, hey, I want Camarillo to listen on this uh, socket, one or many, could be UDP, T, uh, TCP, many IP addresses, many ports, we can bridge between them. You can tell how many worker processes to create, how much memory, and a lot of other, uh, let's say, attributes you can set via these uh, global parameters. Then most of the features in Camarillo are coming through this extension, we call them modules, and you have to load them, including like uh, list cost routing, load balancing, even authentication. Even if you want to send a SIP reply with Camarillo, you have to load the module. The core, we keep it, uh, let's say, um, slim in the way that we keep the components that are needed for everyone else, but not in the, let's say, business, uh, type of features, so it will be like uh, C parser, transport layer management, memory management, and things like that. And uh, after uh, loading the modules and setting the module parameters, we have the routing blocks. And you can think about them like some functions that are called or executed by Camarillo on various events, like receiving a SIP request, receiving a uh, SIP response, or we forwarded a SIP response, but it was not getting a 200 OK, so it's like a failure routing, and we want to reroute. Think about this LCR gateway hunting. The first one has no more available channels. You want to reroute, so we give all this kind of uh, flexibility to decide the routing. But at the end, what's there is kind of uh, programming a scripting language, and you have to tell Camaelio what it should do with all these packets. And based on what you need to build, could be quite large um, um, configuration file, and adding topology, I think, could be something that people think, oh, I would rather do it with some component, but my role here is to show that it's uh, very simple. Now when it comes to topology hiding, it's, again, I said it's a SIP signaling server, so practically we deal with these SIP packets. We receive them, we decide if they are uh, well formatted, if it's coming from a valid source by authenticating with user password or with uh, IP addresses, and then we decide where to send it. Could be via user location, sending to a registered phone, or could be LCR rules, load balancing, all these kind of features we can do. But we are also like a proxy. So that means we add some headers, and in those headers we put our address. But we don't remove the headers that we received and have the addresses of the endpoint that send the traffic to us. So as you could notice, this would be the received invites by Camaelio, and you, in blue, the V address, the contact, actually the address of the caller. And when we send it out, we keep them and we add, like here, we change a little bit the request URL, say by location record, 
and then we add a record out and we add our own via, you notice there are two vias right now. So this would be the usual uh, proxy behavior. And we keep contact as it is. Sometimes we transform it a little bit to help with not traversal, but let's say that's uh, secondary, the address of the endpoint is still uh, uh, there usually. And also quite important for full uh, topology hiding, there is IP addresses in the SDP, one or more, depending on how many streams. But again, Kamailu is not processing the media, so for a full uh, topology hiding, you have to use RTP engine or RTP proxy media relay. The focus here with the extension in Kamailu, it's on hiding these uh, IP addresses in the uh, SIP headers. This is a simple scenario, not to have it uh, like a big message, but if you have like a chain of proxy, you can see there are many V addresses, many record out, and you want to hide all of them, besides the one from uh, Camaelio. So here we are with the solution or the, the options you can use from Camaelio to hide these um, headers. Could be business, like an interconnect, and you, want, you don't want to disclose the interconnect partners that you have on left and right side. Could be security, you have a large core network and you don't want to disclose their addresses so they are not subject of attack. Uh, and in some situation, it's also because of the size. Uh, you want to uh, uh, shrink down the size of the uh, message. The first option that we have is um, we are masking the headers using the topo module. And this is a really nice one in terms of scalability and also um, um, a distribution of the traffic. It's not removing the header, it's only hiding by encrypting and reformatting them in a way that are still valid from the SIP uh, uh, parser point of view. It's completely stateless in the way that you can get the invite on one system like Camaelio, which can, let's say, crash or you shut down, and even the response can come on another Camaelio that took over the IP address. There is no data specific for that dialogue or transaction that should be stored. It's based on a secret key. And uh, then also, like, the buy could come on another one and routing is just working um, uh, fine. And as I said, the config file could grow over the time and become complex. And by design, this module is not uh, requiring any change to your existing config file routing blocks where you have all these rules for if it's invite and so on. You just load this module and then you set some parameters and that's it. The previous config should just work. And also very important to have in mind, when the config is executed, practically the SIP message looks like there was no topology hiding. So it's practically transparent. It's just loading, and then it does some work before executing the config file, usually to decrypt some header, and after config file is executed, we'll encrypt some headers. So it's, uh, uh, in terms of performance, if you think it's memory, you should not notice any kind of decrease in capacity of a Camaelio instance. I put here only like, minimalistic loading the module and setting the two required parameters. The first will be this secret key that you want, you need to share between Camaelo instances that you want to have in the same group. And then will be what will be the IP address to be used for hiding the endpoints from each other. Could be Camaelo address, so or could be something that is not even a sign, could be even like Lubeck address because it's still working and you will see in the next uh, messages. Lately, in the last years, and some people that were aware of uh, Topo from a couple of years ago, maybe they, they are not uh, uh, up to date, and I wanted to also list that you can have some special uh, routing blocks, event route blocks, where uh, you can decide for this dialogue or for this message, don't do topology hiding. 
And actually, we have two types of event routes. One is topo MSG outgoing, and the uh, other one is MSG sending. It's a slightly difference between them. The purpose is somehow similar. The first one is uh, somehow a bit more lightweight in the way that is not parsing the message, but you can still do condition on like source IP, destination IP. So if you have this condition, it's better to use the first one because you save a bit on memory and CPU for processing. If you need to do decision like on user, if it's coming from Bob, let's not do topology hiding because I want to do some, let's say, advanced troubleshooting and I want to collaborate with the network on the traffic and so on. And to tell that, okay, skip doing um, topology hiding for this uh, uh, request for this dialogue, you just have to use like a drop. So you have your condition you know, on source IP, on user, and then you call drop, and then uh, uh, the module will not uh, do processing for this traffic. So let's look a little, uh, uh, at uh, the traffic with the uh, topo module enabled. This would be the one that the proxy received. So again, we have a single via header, we have the contact with the values specific to the caller. And when Kamaile is sending out, it adds its own headers like record out. And as you can see, first via it's with the address of uh, the, the proxy. And the second via, it has this mask IP and a larger parameter that it's valid for um, uh, SIP uh, parser. So practically we encrypted and somehow encoded inside the branch parameter the previous value of the via. And the same we do with the contact. What used to be in the previous, so what Camilo received, it was like Alice address, you have like a mapping at the top. When it's, we send out, we put our masking IP address Again, could become a ILU address, but I made it here with a different address that is not related to this network, and a parameter encoding the previous value. Now we start receiving the response, and if you are familiar with SIP, we'll get the two VIAs, and now the contact will be from Bob, from the colleague. The first VIA is Kamailo, and both sides know Kamailo, they send uh, over IP, so they need to need the address. Kamailo will have to remove its own via its SIP standard processing uh, requirement. And then what we send out, you see at the bottom, it's a via header that now decoded, decrypted, and made as original. So if you look again at the incoming invite, it's practically this IP address and port there. And we encrypt the contact, but again, we format it in a way that it's uh, still uh, uh, valid. So practically all the information is in the headers. It's just uh, encrypted and uh, encoded. And then when we get the act, the buy, we do this kind of encoding, decoding, when receiving and sending out, and everything is uh, working great. The only, or some drawbacks here would be that the size of the message increases as you can see, some uh, larger value some, for some parameters. And uh, then you still have a sort of uh, metadata with how many hops were there. But uh, you don't disclose the addresses of them. So you could see if it was another proxy, there should be like uh, trivia addresses. But in terms of performances and uh, you know resources used by the, the system, Practically, you should not notice anything. You don't need any extra backend or other uh, uh, systems to make it work. It just load the module, set those two parameters, and practically that's it. You don't touch anything else, unless you need those event routes to skip uh, top off for some of the traffic. That's the first variant, because then I have the second one, which is by stripping headers, so it's the topos module. Uh, somehow similar in concept, you don't need to do any s change to the existing routing blocks, but it requires a backend because instead of encrypting and encoding, it's actually saving to a backend. So text that header and we'll put it in a backend, which could be a database or a Redis, sends out, this time look like the invite, it's generated by Kamailu itself, so it'll be only a single 
uh, via header with the address of gamma helium and will be a contact with the address of gamma helium, nothing related to the color itself. But then it's kind of stateful persistent storage. So you can use a cluster of um, Redis or database if you want to work with a, a group of gamma helios handling this um, uh, kind of uh, traffic. Also in the config file, it is practically similar. You load the module, set some parameters, like storage type, database or Redis, and then based on that, like the address of the, um, in this case, it's a MySQL server. We have also the event routes, similar to uh, Topo, but this time the name is like Topos MSG outgoing and Topos MSG sending. So just the name of the module is changing there. And you have similar approach. You can have your own condition to decide, I want to do topology stripping for this uh, traffic or just uh, skip it. To see it on the wire, so this, again, it's what Kamailio receives from the caller with a via contact specific to that uh, endpoint. And when sending out, this time, we still have a single via and is the IP address of uh, Kamailio. And the contact, which is at the bottom, it's also the address of Kamailio with some specific, uh, um, let's say, session ID as a username. Could, the module could be configured to put that session ID as a parameter for the contact address. So it has more um, parameters that I gave in the previous slide as an example. In, so you can tune more also for the topo, but as well as for topos, there are uh, many more uh, module parameters that uh, can help you tune Kama Ilio for your uh, specific uh, needs. So as I said, this looks like Kama Ilio is the first hop, like it's initiating the call. When we get the 200 OK, again, it's a mirror of the via header. It was only one. The contact now is specific to the callee. And then uh, when Kamailio is forwarding that one, okay, we'll take from the storage the via that was saved for this session, and then we'll replace the contact with the session ID specific to Kamailio and the Kamailio IP. And then when we get the back, the, the buy, practically it's more like we identify the session by request URI or uh, some other header. We remove what's specific to the uh, sending uh, side, and we insert the header specific to the uh, outgoing sign. In the Kamailio routing blocks, you'll see all the headers. So those that we store it and we put there, and as well as those that are we are we are going to remove and replace. So in the config file, is still a proxy, completely. So this would be and uh, how it looks. And if you wonder if it's now a back-to-back -back user agent, it's not. So it's still a proxy all, uh, all the way. It's just we use some tricks internally to uh, fake it and look like a back-to-back -back user agent from outside. That would be, for me, just to uh, end up pointing more resources for you if you want, or if you are in the still shaken, I wanted to point this uh, project that I'm maintaining as well, because it has also like a CLI tool, is not only uh, um, a library, so you can validate from the command line, it can also run like a REST API system, so you can make it work, like add still shaken to any application that can do uh, REST API request, so check this uh, sexy IDX uh, project on GitHub, it's uh, open source. A quick reference to my book, and that's it, thank you. Keep in mind m the dates, or the aiming of doing uh, next Kamail Award in Berlin by late May, early June. So I hope to see a couple of uh, you there as well, otherwise, if I have time for a few questions, I'm here. Thank you. A question here.
Does uh, Kameli do any SIP uh, manipulation? It does all the SIP manipulation you want, like if you think about changing headers, changing content of the body, and so on, yes, the answer is yes, and can do a lot. Okay. So probably it's a recording. I'm not sure if the lunch and learn was recorded, yeah, but yeah. yesterday I did some, a little bit of that. Okay. Can we have the, this slide privately? Sorry? Can, can we get your slide, the whole set? Yeah, I'll uh, make them available. Usually on camailio.org, we have it as well like a mirror of the slides, typically for the events we go to, but probably ClueCon will also distribute them. So, a question, um, okay. Uh, yes, Daniel, so um, given the, the data you already provided, what's your heuristics for deciding when to use uh, topo H or topo S, or maybe even suggesting a different, a different approach? So I'm a big fan of Topo. It was the first I developed, and it's uh, really performant. But I understand when some people are a little bit concerned on size. So if you ask my choice, it's Topo. But if you um, need it to look like a back-to-back -back user engine, and with some of the old gateways, a proxy sometimes has issues, not because of the proxy implementation, but the gateway kind of supports one-to-one -one SIP, uh, like peer-to-peer. -peer. And then um, Topos, it's uh, saving the situation. Otherwise, there are situations where I don't deploy it, uh, because maybe it's a free switch that I have in the path and that's a back-to-back -back user, like a proper back-to-back -back user agent and it's splitting uh, in two and could be just enough, even if it's coming back to Kamailo from free switch, it's enough to hide from security and other points. But if you ask my preference, that's uh, top of because it's uh, very performant from. The other one is not like it's not performant, it's just you depend on the backend, of course. And it's why we have the option for Redis, which is very fast key value storage and has also clustering. But if you have like to compare between two, of course there is some overhead with the storage. Okay, I think it's time for the break, if I'm not wrong. Thank you, everyone, once again. I'm around here if you Give want. it up for Daniel. Yes.